So yes, as you are saying, this is the experimental spectrum. This is experimental. We are trying to compare with experiment. So what we have done here, we have considered just the effect of pairing. No configuration we see. Okay. So H1 is of course present. H1 is there. H, so here, so this this case, this is basically your here I am considering H0 plus H1, of course. But I am just considering pairing in this case. Here I have considered H1 pairing plus configuration BC. Both. Both I have considered. So this is without configuration mixing, this is with configuration mixing. But pairing is present in both of them. Now what I am going to do, I am now going to introduce the concept of isospin, right? The only difference between proton and neutron. And then I am going to again do the same old calculations. So remember, these two are interacting shell model. So this is interacting shell model. Or this is, you can say, single particle or non-interacting shell model. Right? So, you see, we have got such nice quantum mechanical model where we have got so nice techniques why do we need some other model apart from the shell model? Right? Now the thing is that you see in the shell model what we are doing basically is we are considering the levels near the Fermi level only as corresponding to the valence space and then we are not considering the low light levels and again we are not considering the upper time levels. This actually goes to infinity. So these are empty states, empty space, this is valency space, this one, and this is the core space. Fine, this is what we do. Now you see, in this very basic case of 18 oxygen, here we have considered the valency space only 1D5 half and 2S half. Remember, this is what I did the configuration we see calculation. So, 1D3 half and all other levels above, they corresponded to the empty space and the core space, what did we have? All the three other levels. S half, P3 half, P half for 18 oxygen. Now, instead of 18 oxygen, if I take some other nucleus, where you see it, the beauty of 18 oxygen is that here the core is 16 oxygen, right? Plus only two neutrons. Now suppose there can be scenarios, right? Where we consider a doubly close cell nucleus, say 40 calcium, and plus along with it we have to consider say. 6 protons and 7 neutrons. Suppose we have got a nucleus like that. Now you see what is happening slowly, say 7, 7 protons and 7 neutrons, or say 8 protons and 7 neutrons. What is happening, you see, slowly, what is the number of nucleons in the core? 40. What is the number? 50. Now slowly, the number of nucleons outside the board, they are getting more and more significant. This is point number one. Point number two is that now, your valency space, you have to... Till now, we have a very small valency space, right? Now, you have to take a more larger valency space because of so many nucleons. And also, if you remember in the shell model, if you go up, even with L dot S plating, there are more and more levels closely spaced up in high, for higher nucleons. And if you take this empty space here, so this is valence space, this is core space, you see the space is much large. 
And as a result, what will happen? You might have to diagonalize. You might have, say, ten lakhs, two plus, something like that. Six lakhs, four plus, fifty lakhs, zero plus. Now it is very hard to do these calculations. Also, you have to consider the effective interaction as well, right? So, what is to be done? It becomes sometimes almost impossible to do these calculations. So, we need to do more and more truncations. That means more reduce the model space, but not necessarily truncations always give us the result. So, there is another approach of understanding the structure. Apart from the shell model type structure, and what is that approach? Look into this. The approach is like that. So we have this core part, right? And slowly, what happens is the number of valency neutrinos, you can say, they become more and more larger. What happens is that the entire core, the number of neutrons is say on this side. Suppose the core is like this, the total number of neutrons is suppose on this side at some instant. What will happen? The core will slightly become deformed. So, so what will happen is that slowly the core, instead of being spherical, it will now slightly become deformed. But these valency neutrons they are moving. So, what will happen? The core will keep on deforming, like this. So, this is like of oscillation, a vibrational type of structure. I am saying. So, what I am going to, trying to say is that there is an alternative way of understanding. The structure apart from this shell model calculations, and this is in terms of collective approach. So now we are talking about collective approach. Now it doesn't mean that shell model you cannot do. If you have very good computer, good interaction, it can be done. And even with the collective model that we have, you have already learned. You have basically learned the, uh, you have learned the geometry collective model. Okay. So in terms of shape, geometry. We can have rotational levels. We can have vibrational levels. So this is yet another alternative approach of understanding the structure. Now you see there is yet another model, geometric model. It is an algebraic geometric model. Sorry, algebraic model. Now what is that? Let us consider an even even nucleus like this. And so, apart from the core, some more number of even protons and neutrons are in the valence space, right? More number of even protons and neutrons are in the valence space. Now, what I am going to do is that a pair. Remember, because of the result of the pairing, we have seen that the zero plus states are always more bound. So, because of the pairing, two protons, two neutrons, they will always be paired together, and as a result. This fermion pair we can consider as a boson. Two protons we can consider as a boson. Two neutrons we can consider as a boson. Okay, so the most simplest observation is yet again we will not consider any interaction between these bosons. And now the entire nucleus, even even nucleus, having total a nucleons, we now map it to a bosonic system. Having a by two bosons, so this is the concept of interacting boson model. And of course, there are certain approximations. Number one, we will consider here only two types of bosons. One type of boson is which gives spin j is equal to zero. Another type of boson is one which gives spin j is equal to two. So the spin j is equal to zero boson is known as S boson. The J is equal to two boson is known as D boson. Okay, and we don't consider any type of interaction between them. No interaction, and this is basically IPA one interacting boson approximation number one. Here we do not consider any interaction between the bosons. So you see, so many type of interesting things just because we are unable to do the shell model calculations exactly. So what did you learn today? What you have learned is that. Even if we we know that this is the way to do, but sometimes it is not practical to do the problem. But we have to try to understand this problem, right? 
Then we always try to look into alternative techniques. So one alternative technique is geometry corrective model and another is your algebra corrective model. Any questions? Bolo. Okay, so you might ask me where is the collective model becoming more and more important? I mean that nature, the collectivity. You must remember the shell model in single particle spectrum that levels will be hazardous. But in collective, when the nuclei they move collectively and the excitations as a result of it, the collective excitations, there is a regularity in the pattern. Remember the rotation of space spectra proportional to j into j plus 1 vibrational spectra equidistant although the effect of anharmonicity causes some degeneracy in the vibrational spectra but there is a regularity in the pattern now this thing you can say basically you remember the shell model right so basically we have got oscillator shells each separated by h cross omega now, but there will be dilution because of the effect of the L dot S interaction. Now, this collective model, this becomes important actually when you see only mid levels are shaped. It has been observed. Only mid levels. You can easily expect that also. If more than mid levels are filled, the, uh, we will be able to do shell model calculations. But if only in the next, suppose this is the cold level and we are considering the low line spectra. Okay. Now, in the just level above, so this is approximately your, uh, so this H cross omega, just above level here, only half of the level is filled, not the full. Then, because of this, there will be lot of interactions, lot of possibilities and shell model becomes very hard to calculate. And if it is lower than half, then also shell model becomes possible to do. Only when it becomes more, closer to more than half or so, it becomes very hard to do shell model calculations and collective features start appearing in the spectrum. Okay. So, this is regarding the low line spectrum. Now, what about high line energy spectrum? When we are talking about high line spectrum, then you cannot consider core as intact because there will be excitations from the core as well. Right? In that case. Also, the empty space will be become smaller. So, this is the scenario only for low line states. For high line states, there will be more and more core excitation. And so you can also expect collectivity when you consider more and more high line states as well. Okay? Half open the next level. So this means above and beyond, to the half of the field, you can expect collective behavior in that. In fact, the quadrupole moment as a result of this becomes so large. That shell model cannot explain it. When in the normal textbooks it is written that in the mid shell levels, nuclei just above the closed shell, in the where middle of the above shell is filled, mid shell nuclei, the quadruple moment is very large and shell model is unable to explain. When people say that, they mean to say that not at all a lot a good effective interaction has been taken into account and entire configuration mixing is not possible. Then only we cannot explain. Otherwise, there is no nucleus which shell model cannot predict. You remember this. So textbooks, they mention that problems with shell model, why does collective model appears. They say that, most of them, you will see that shell model is unable to explain the quadruple moment, large values of quadruple moment. But what they, they, do, they do not mention is that shell model without taking into account proper interaction, without taking into account the large dimensional diagonalization as a result of large number of configurations, of course it is failed, bound to fail. 
But if we take into account the proper interaction and large number of diagonalization, even those large quadruple moments, they can be easily reproduced. It has been observed. So shell model is like God model. Okay. So you must remember this as students of advanced nuclear structure. You must remember that this is sort of textbooks fail to say. Maybe because it is very hard for students to understand the concept of configuration mixing and all that. The problems due to diagonalization and all that. Okay, but you must understand this. Balu, question